Continuing on with this example we were looking at for factoring, we start off with the example x squared plus x minus 2, which is a quadratic. And I gave you some steps here in order to follow. And we had gone so far as to find a, b, and c, which is what we were told here. We had found the product and the sum, and we found two magic numbers, so to speak, that actually give you this product and this sum. What happens if you can't find these magic numbers? Well, first, you have to be really careful to make sure you've thought of all the combinations. In other words, something like 1 and negative 2 and negative 1 and 2. So as long as you've been really, really careful with all the different numbers, if you can't find the magic numbers, then this thing does not factor. It's very possible that it doesn't factor. I just want you to keep that in mind. Quadratics don't always factor. But if quadratics do factor, they're extremely easy to solve once you get used to it. And more and more, when you do a high school mathematics, you'll find that factoring quadratics saves the day. It's very fast. It's quite painless once you get used to it. And actually, it's very, very useful for finding solutions. So continuing on here, we had found our magic numbers, which are negative 1 and 2. Those were here. Those are two numbers that multiplied to negative 1, but also added up to positive 1. So I found those. Now, like I said, most teachers sort of factoring tricks do start off with these first three steps. And then comes a weird step, number four, number five. And this is beautiful, it works really well. And actually you can do a neat mathematical proof that shows why you can do this, but uh, I think I'm going to leave that for now. You'll just have to trust me. Now I wanna divide both the numbers by a. Remember my a value in this case was one. So I'm gonna divide this by one, I'm gonna divide this by one, and then I should reduce the fractions if possible. In this case, I can't reduce them anymore. And when I say read from bottom to top now, this is the last part. It turns out once you've gotten these fractions like this, you're done. We're going to write it as a bracket, so to speak, or parentheses, times another parentheses. In other words, that's what it's like to be factored. Factoring looks just like this. And when I say bottom to top, what I mean by that is this bottom number here is going to have the x multiplied by it. So will this one. So in this case, it's going to be 1 times x. And when I say bottom to top, I mean take this number now and then add it to this one here. So in other words, negative 1. In other words, in this case, it's going to be 1 times x, which is just x, x minus 1. And the second term then will be x. And then this is a plus in front of it, really. So it's x plus 2. So that's my answer. It's fully factored. Now, you can always check if it works. But you don't have to use factoring tricks. What if you just look at this equation and you have a good guess as to what it'll look like? There's no problem. Just guess. You can always tell if you did it right by expanding it. So let's check if we did it right. So by, if I want to check if I did it right, I just expand this. So let's use this trick that I taught you before, this FOIL trick that we were looking at. The first times outside times inside times last. So in this case, if I want to check if I did it right, I can easily do that. Let's multiply first times first. That gives me x times x, which is x squared. Now I want outside next, so x times 2. That gives me 2x. Then inside, that's negative 1 times x. So that's negative x. And last, negative 1 times 2, which is minus 2. And of course, I combine these two terms because they both have x's in them. I have x squared. 2x minus 1x is going to give me plus 1x minus 2. So is this really supposed to be x squared plus x minus 2? Yes. So that's how I know I did it right. So like I said, you can always check if you did an answer right just by expanding it. Now we can do a little bit more with this as well. Uh, we can do a different example here. And I'm going to give you one that's maybe looking a little bit harder, but it turns out you can also do it quite simply. So another example. Let's just say I give you one that uh, maybe looks a little bit harder. Maybe it's one that goes like this. 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. Now a lot of uh, tricks for factoring fall apart as soon as the term in front of the x squared is not 1. In other words, when a is not 1. Remember, because this goes a times b times c like this. Well, ax squared plus bx plus c. So let's use these tricks again. First thing, take out any common factors. So I'm going to go down here. Are there common factors to all of these? Nope. The 2 here, the 5 here, the 3. I can't take out one number from all of them. So I'm done with step 1. Step 2 says to write out a, b, and c. And then after that, I can figure that out. So a is going to be 2. That's the number in front of the x squared. 
B is going to be negative 5, and C is going to be negative 3. The next step says to find the magic numbers. In other words, the product is A times C, and the sum is B. So I'll do that. So product, which is AC, will be 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6. Sum, however, should be just B, which in this case is negative 5. So I need to start writing out numbers that multiply out to negative 6. And hopefully, uh, one pair of them adds up to negative 5 when I add them up together. So let's see. First of all, what numbers can multiply to negative 6? Well, I always think of the simplest one, 1. 1 times what? 1 times negative 6 will work. But don't forget the other pair. In other words, if you have 1 times negative 6, you can also write negative 1 and positive 6. That also works. So always be careful of that, these little secret stealthy ones over here. But that's not just it. I mean, if I wanted to just be careful here, of course, I could also write down 2 and negative 3, and I could also say negative 2 and 3. Now, of course, if you really get good at this, of course, you'll just start to just guess the numbers, and that's fine. But I just want to teach you to be methodical. Just write down all of them. Then take a look. Do any of them add up to negative 5? It turns out this one here does. 1 minus 6 gives you negative 5. None of these other ones actually work for the sum. So those are my two magic numbers now. So it's 1 and negative 6. Those are my two numbers I'm looking at. Okay, I found my magic numbers. Step 4 is to divide by A and reduce the fractions. And after that, we read bottom to top as last step. Let's see if we can do that now. I want to divide them both by A. And in this case, A was 2. I divide them both by 2. Now I have to reduce the fractions. 1 half doesn't reduce. I can't divide them both by a number to make it smaller. Um, well, not something useful at least. But negative 6 divided by 2, that does reduce. Uh, if you think about it, you can divide them both by the same number. In fact, we can divide them both by 2. So if I divide negative 6 by 2, I get negative 3. If I divide 2 by 2, I get 1. So negative 3 over 1 is the same thing as negative 6 over 2. So I've reduced the fractions. Remember the last step then was read bottom to top? So in this case, I'm going to do that. Go like this, write out my brackets. And remember, this little number right here, when I say bottom to top, I mean this little number is going to have an x by it, so will this. So it's going to become 2 times x plus 1. In this case, 2x plus 1. 2x plus 1. And the next one is going to be 1 times x minus 3. So x minus 3. And that's how we factor. And of course, we can double check if we did it right by expanding. So let's check if we did it right. I'll expand a little bit faster this time. So 2x times x is going to be 2x squared. That's the first terms. Then the outside is going to be minus 6x. The inside is going to be plus x. And the last is going to be minus 3. And that gives me 2x squared. I'm going to combine the minus 6x and the plus 1x. That gives you minus 5x minus 3. So is it supposed to be 2x squared minus 5x minus 3? Sure is. So that's how I know I did it right. And you can always check if you did it right. Like I said before, you could have just guessed this, or maybe you guess it slightly wrong, you expand it, see it's missing a little bit, and then you can always change it. That is a way to do it, and some students are very good at that. They have a good intuition. But if you don't have any intuition, at least, or if you're not sure what to do, you can always just follow these five steps, and it is a way to do factoring. And like I said, it's not the only way, but it's a really good way, I find, to do factoring by hand of things, of course, that factor.